Here's the deal. The future of the International Space Station is one of the biggest questions in space right now. It has been in jeopardy for the past several years, and as soon as the uncertainty started to fade away, Russia invaded Ukraine, started a disgusting war, turning practically the whole world against itself. So what happens now? Will the ISS live through all that mess, or are we at the inevitable end of the most magnificent international project in human history? Let's figure this out. First of all, let's start with what we had before the war. In the past several years, there were a lot of tension between NASA and Roscosmos about their cooperation. NASA was clearly interested in expanding its new approach of not directly owning its hardware in space, but rather buying services from private companies. It has successfully done so in the Commercial Crew program, and it also will use the same approach in a lot of aspects of the Artemis program. And there already were a number of initiatives regarding the low Earth orbit. For example, there is a project by Axiom who are already building their own space station. At first, it's supposed to be an extension of the ISS with additional modules that can be used for all sorts of applications, including space tourism or renting them to NASA or even other space agencies. And when the ISS will be retired, the Axiom station was supposed to separate and continue flying on its own. Last year, NASA also announced three initial winners of the Commercial LEO Destinations program and awarded over $400,000 for their development. This includes a project called Orbital Reef, by Blue Origin, Boeing and Sierra Space, it is by far the largest and the most ambitious project on them all. Another one is called Star Lab by Nanrex, Voyager Space and Lockheed Martin, which is a much smaller station with one big inflatable module. And the third one is Northrop Grumman and Dynetics, which doesn't even have a proper name or render yet. And there also might be further new entries in the commercial Leo destinations program along the way. However, projects like that take a lot of time. Therefore, NASA made it clear that it wanted to expand the ISS program until 2030, and hopefully, by that time, they will have at least one alternative ready. At the same time, Roscosmos were clearly having an opposite view. Last year, they started claiming that they don't want to participate in the ISS project after 2025. They even claimed that they started building their own space station called ROS. Yet, for some reason, last year they launched two new modules called Nauka and Prichala to the ISS, which from my point of view is a little bit self-contradictory. Recently, Russia also tried to bluntly escalate a conflict by blaming NASA astronaut for drilling a hole in the Soyuz spacecraft that most probably was yet another manufacturing defect, which Roscosmos, to be honest, has some history of. However, the accusations didn't really lead to anything and everybody sort of forgot about them. Also, there were rumors that Russians approached the Chinese and asked them to change the inclination of the Tiangun station so that Roscosmos could fly to it from their launch sites. This approach was rejected though, and of course, Russia denied that it even happened. Now, after Russia started a war and invaded Ukraine, it lost pretty much all of its space contracts and partnerships. Pretty much everyone turned their back on Roscosmos. OneWeb, ESA with their Mars rover and Kuru launch site, Hirozito telescope, etc. The only thing remaining for now is the ISS, which, according to NASA, continues to function normally. However, Russia is clearly desperate here. Their head, Mitri Rogozin, acts as an absolute clown and tries to blackmail the entire world on Twitter. He's openly saying that he wants to turn the ASS into a weapon and possibly drop it on Europe or the US. He demands the sanctions to be lifted and wants other countries to stop acting unfriendly. At the same time, he posts military slogans, supports the war, puts Russian Z letters, which is pretty much a new swastika today, on space equipment and things like that. Russia state propaganda and I also published a video of separating the ISS, which is clearly a fiction and another bluff. Rogozin also claimed that without Russia's progress ships and its engines, there is no way of maintaining the orbit of the ISS. However, it is not true, as it can also be done by Cygnus spacecrafts or quite possibly by Dragon, which was hinted by Musk's short response on Twitter. There was also a controversial thing with the clothing of the newly arrived Russian crew to the ISS. Blue and yellow are the colors of the Ukrainian flag. Most Western media saw it as a protest and a sign of support to Ukraine, which would mean that there are some serious tensions inside Roscosmos. But at the same time, it could also be a failed pre-planned celebration of the war campaign, which was supposed to end by that date, but as you know, failed miserably. So anyway, take this situation with a grain of salt. So considering all the threats from Roscosmos and the clear isolation of Russia under the sanctions, what does the future hold for the ISS and why NASA and other agencies agencies still didn't burn any bridges here. I personally think that the main reason for that is that there is no clear plan of the separation process. The modules on the ISS are tightly integrated. 
There are things like reaction wheels, solar panels and other stuff that you cannot just split in half and make two stations out of one. Besides, any technical solution for that would require a lot of time and quite possibly multiple launches. So the space industry just cannot react quickly enough to a very rapidly evolving situation here on Earth. You should also consider that the ASS is a very long-term project, so NASA and its partners keep in mind that the current Russian regime will eventually fall and somebody, hopefully more competent than Rogozin, can come to power in Roscosmos. Cutting them off completely now would ruin the chance in the future. Russia's positions aren't really as strong as they want you to think. Rogozin can bluff as much as he wants to, but he doesn't really have any means of single-handedly bringing the space station down. He has no valid reason to do so either. Using the ISS as a weapon is clearly a very dumb idea which might be stupid enough for Twitter but meaningless in real life. Besides, he doesn't really have full control of the station to execute such a maneuver. So for now, the ISS is in the situation of a stalemate. And time clearly plays against Russia here. NASA spends 3 to 4 billion a year on the space station. It's a huge investment and nobody wants to lose it because of a Russian clown. My personal predictions are that for now the ISS will stay as it is for a while, however the current conflict should accelerate the developments of any plans to isolate the Russian segment and continue normal operation of the station even if Roscosmos goes completely wild. The current situation can also accelerate the development of new space stations and we might even see new projects emerge right now. Like for example, if Starship will fly soon enough, a couple of them can add a significant amount of useful space and engine power to the ISS, or they can even act as a separate space station if needed. So there are plenty ways that private space companies can take the advantage of the current events in terms of getting additional funding while the situation is still hot. And even though Rogozin might threaten the future of the space station, it's clear that he is not really interested in leaving the ISS. Russian state propaganda will still need to show at least some sort of success in space, and keeping their cosmonauts on the International Space Station is really their only option. They are now cut off of any external contracts, they have no access to Western tech, no access to new chips and semiconductors, which means they won't be able to produce electronics for any of their future planned projects. So no Ross Space Station in the foreseeable future, no scientific initiatives, very limited satellite production and so on. They might have an option to work with China, but first of all it will put a lot of pressure on China and it will also put Russia in a very submissive role. As I said, they will be forced to fly from the Chinese launch sites, they have no hardware of their own on the Tiangan station and have no power and no say in any meaningful decisions there. So I believe that for now the ISS is safe, but a lot will change around it in the nearest future. If you have any ideas of your own about what will happen to the ISS, let me know them in the comment section below. Also don't forget to thumbs up and share if you liked the video or dislike it if you didn't. Subscribe for more content like this, but most importantly stay curious my friends.